I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to part four of our CCNA CCNP Ether Channel webinar. We've just created uh, an Ether Channel on both switches one and two, but we had run into an issue on switch one where our trunk ports were put into error disabled state. And one way we can tell that the Ether Channel is not working correctly, and I'm willing to bet that it's not is that we can run show interface trunk just like we did earlier and we get nothing and as we know if we run a Cisco show command and then we get a blank line and then we're back at the cursor or back at the prompt I should say then that means there's nothing to show us now in this particular instance we know what happened because we saw it live that all of our trunk ports were put into error disabled mode now that we've gone ahead and finished the ether channel configuration, we just need to shut down those error disabled ports and then open them back up. And can we use the interface range command to do that group? What do you think? Let's try interface range. Leave that space in there. Let's do a shut and then a no shut. I'll give that a moment to cook, if you will. Well, we've got a lot of line protocols coming up, and that last message looks really good that the port channel has changed state to up. And look at that. Look at that. Our trunk is up. And now notice that before, where we saw the individual switch ports listed over here, now we're just seeing PO1, and that's for port channel 1. So that means that our ether channel is working. You can actually do a show command on show interface port channel 1 if you want. And here's a little hint about um, what that is. Hardware is ether channel. That's about as obvious as it gets. So that's all looking good so far, but you know what we need to do now is run that show spanning command again and see if we're actually using all three of the ports. And look at this. Now where we were seeing uh, three ports here under interface, but only one of them was in forwarding mode, now we just see the port channel and check out that cost. The cost has gone from 19 to 9. So you can see with that much of a lower cost, we're definitely you have a lot more bandwidth available to us. Because Spanning Tree Protocol sees this as one link, and it's got those three fast Ethernet paths bundled in it. And the more paths you add to it, the more that cost is going to go down. So that's one major reason that we love an Ether channel. And let's see, what was the other one? The other one was that we don't have as large an impact if a port inside the ether channel goes down. Well, we're going to test that in just a moment. Stick around with that, but I think we should actually use a command here that has the word ether channel in it. How about that? So we've got show ether channel. We've got quite a bit of information here. We're really going above and beyond here, but uh, that never hurts. One thing I do want to share with you, whenever you see the word detail in Cisco iOS output, prepare for a lot of detail, probably more than you're ever going to need. I usually start with summary whenever that's available. And again, we don't need to know everything here for the NA example. Let's take a look at this anyway. And you can see the flags here. It's kind of similar to what you see in your routing table. You know, you've got codes in there. You can see that we've got one channel group in use. Here's the name of it. It's got a capital S and a capital U next to it. And all you've got to do is go up here and just look it up. You know, what does that mean? Well, layer 2 is what that capital S means. There is such a thing as a layer 3 ether channel. I just want to mention that to you. You will see that in more advanced studies. It's nothing you're going to run into uh, in the NA or the current NP exams. And the uppercase U is in use. And it actually even shows you the ports that are in the ether channel. It's pretty cool. Now let me show you the detail because when you're getting into advanced troubleshooting, this will give you plenty of information. Notice the max ports value. Remember we said two to eight trunks can go into an ether channel and there's uh, that's been verified. And this also shows you 
how long a given port has been in the state that it's in right now. So right now that port of 010 has been in the ether channel and up for 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Then we have 37 and 37 there. And also at the very bottom here, and this can be good for troubleshooting, it'll show you the time since the last port was put into the ether channel and then the amount of time since the last port was unbundled. So, like I said, a little more advanced here for the NA or probably for the NP than we need to, but I definitely want to show you that particular command. But again, I'd like to just stick with show ether channel summary for anything I'm doing there. Now, we talked about how the ether channel will not have to go back through the listening and learning stages if it loses one of the ports in the ether channel. So you know what we're going to do, since we're in a lab environment, this is not something we would test at work, thank you. Um, I tell you what, we're going to test that. Let's shut a port down here and switch one. What do you think? What is going to happen here, group? Let me ask you that. What's going to happen here? You know, we talk about the theory, but we know sometimes theory in real world doesn't always match up. hate to say that, but it is true. What do you think is going to happen here? Will the ether channel go down? Will the port cost go up or down? What do you think? Just take a second there to think about that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the magic button here. And I'll qu quickly run show spanning VLAN 1. Sorry for the extra jigger there. So we've got line protocol on interface. So that, that went down. The interface did indeed go down. But notice that the ether channel itself never went down. It didn't go down. It didn't start going through listening and learning mode, that kind of thing. It never went down. So communications between the two switches were never interrupted. There is one difference here though, and I'm sure you see that already, the cost went back up slightly to 12. Again, I wouldn't drive myself nuts trying to memorize every port cost with an ether channel, that kind of thing. I do think it's a good idea for you to know what the default cost of, an ether, of a fast ethernet port is, and of course that's 19, we saw that earlier. But this is the other joy, if you will, of an ether channel. We saw the first one earlier where we get to use all of our available bandwidth instead of just having those two trunks just sitting there as backups. But now we've got an even better deal that when a port goes down, then we don't have the entire STP recalculation, just a quick cost recalculation. Now I know what a couple of you are already asking, what happens if we shut another one down? Well, we can do that too. This is part of the fun of a lab, right? You can shut all these ports down that you want. I know that's going to give us, yeah, I'll run show spanning VLAN 1 again. And there you have it. We have actually shut down every trunk now except one in the Ether channel, but it still never went down. It didn't go back through listening and learning mode. It stays in forwarding mode. Now, the cost is all the way back up to 19 now, so obviously you're going to see a slowdown in throughput because you've lost about two-thirds of your available bandwidth. But again, you didn't have that 50 to 55 second delay in a port having to come out of blocking mode after max age and then going through listening mode and then going through learning mode. In the next part of the webinar, we're going to take a look at what happens when you put those ports back in and if there's anything special we have to do for that ether channel. So thanks for watching this part and I'll see you over on part five.